who's ready to go to battle with me and the rest of the nation? This week at Chat Sports, we're looking at all of our channels and we're seeing, all right, which channel can get the most subs? Right now, these are the top three. Cowboys at number one, Raiders at number two, Dolphins at number three. Realistically, I'm not too worried about Miami. We'll take care of them. But the Cowboys report, it's a big time channel here. So if you could, hit that subscribe button and help Raider Nation take down the Cowboys. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders report. And coming up here on today's show, we're going to look at the latest news and rumors around the Las Vegas Raiders. We're going to talk about a lot of the things that Josh McDaniels had to say this week. And one of the biggest things that we're going to look at is the Raiders offensive line because I believe the Raiders have already revealed their plans of who the starting five is going to be on the O-line. First story, though, that we're going to get in here is around some news. And for those that don't know, Foss Moreau has been dealing, unfortunately for him, with cancer. But the Raiders did bring him in on a visit. And I've had a few people ask me, why did the Raiders do that? Well, from what I understand from the people that I talk to is if Foster's not on an NFL team, he still has medical coverage with the NFLPA. However, though, if he were to sign a contract with the Raiders, he would have better, better coverage. Somebody that I spoke to said it's kind of similar to when a player wants to retire with a certain team, like you sign that one-day contract, and then you're able to retire a Raider. I'm not saying that he's going to retire. The hope is that he's still able to get back out there on the field. But I do think Mark Davis deserves a lot of love for at least having this idea in the back of his mind. He has not signed with the Raiders. It's just for him to come in with a visit, I was told that that could have been one of the conversations that the Raiders were having. If you all haven't already, please reach out to Foster, reach out to his family and say, hey man, Raider Nation, we got your back. More Raiders news here to cover. It's around joint practices and it sounds like the Silver and Black are going to be doing joint practices with the Niners this upcoming offseason. It's ballsy, man. I, um, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that they're doing it with the 49ers. I know last season they did a little bit with the New England Patriots. and I don't know how many fans are going to be there. But uh, as always, if you guys do get an invite to go to a joint practice, hopefully... You better, uh, you better be repping the nation as always. Now, this show continues to grow and grow and grow. And I know earlier on I said, hey, let's get into a sub battle. Well, here are the last five people that subscribe to the Raiders Report. Huge shout out to Icy Barrett Gaming, How I Fixed It, Blazer1000, and Gamer Sal 77 Lil Sal. If you want to see your name on a future Raiders Report show, hit that subscribe button because we're trying to take down the Cowboys and it's going to be a team effort. All right, y'all, so who's ready to get in now to some rumors here? Let's talk about Andre James. I realistically thought James was going to be long gone because of the money that the Silver and Black could have saved. However, though, is Andre going to be staying with the Raiders in 2023? I'm going to give this one three just win babies, which means I believe it's a 75% chance that he is going to be under center for the Raiders at the start of the season. So McDaniel said on Monday that the plan is to have James start at center. Now, I get it, and it's always you know a little bit difficult to believe in some of the things that McDaniels, Ziegler, shit, even Mark Davis say at this point, because he also said Waller was going to be a big part of the team, and then two weeks later... Hasta la vista, baby. Also, the reason why I do think this is an interesting move is because if the Raiders were to cut James, they could save $5.1 million in 2023. This doesn't mean that they're not going to draft a center. This doesn't mean that that's still going to be an open competition. It is, but I do think it speaks volumes of the strides that James has made. I also think it shows how confident this Raiders organization is in Carmen Rosillo because he's one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL. Last season, James, according to PFF, played in 964 snaps. He had an overall grade of 62.8, pass blocking grade of 64.5, a run blocking grade of 59.3. James is a little bit undersized for your normal center, but I was talking to one of my friends out in Las Vegas, and James told him that he's trying to put on 15 good pounds this offseason. I'm hoping I can run into him this year out in Vegas, and I'll see it for myself, but I know when I stood next to him last year at the Hankins Burger Eating Contest, he seemed pretty freaking big to me. In terms of stats, penalties three, two sacks, five hits allowed, 24 pressures. 
He, the more and more he continues to play, I will admit, the better he's going to get. And if you're able to put somebody who's a little bit more reliable at right guard, that will help him out. And then with Dylan Parham there at left guard, I'm hoping that James continues to get better and better. So what do you think? If you're new to the Raiders report, you're going to see a lot of different stories on this show. I'm going to give my opinion, but this show is popular, I believe, because we also want you all to interact with us. So with Andre James... Be the Raiders starting center this year. Now's your opportunity. Go down to the comments. It's going to be the ad pin on this show, which means the very top comment. So give me a Y for yes. Give me an N for no. Will James be the Raiders starting center this year? I would say anything is possible with McDaniels. However, if you, me, Martin, Sin Overlord, Tyre McMillan, Chugs, we all walked into a Las Vegas casino and they said, put some money down on who's going to be the Raiders starting center, my money's going to go on Andre James. And as it stands right now, if you were to ask me, Mitch, what would be the Raiders starting offensive line in week one? Yeah, we got to put Parker and Murray over underneath right tackle. I'll get that fixed. But anyway, it would be Colt Miller at left tackle, Dylan Parham at left guard, Andre James at center, Natane Moody at right guard, and then Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle. For those of you that are watching right now, don't look at the backups. I have to fix that. I tried to update it, and uh, yep, it's a big L on my part. So, But the thing that I want you to look at, more importantly, is this is what I believe that the Raiders' starting offensive line would be. Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, Natane Moody, Jermaine Illuminor. Still, we'll fix it, Chugs. Don't worry. We'll get it to it <laughs> another day. But I, I don't know how you all feel about that offensive line. There's still some good. There's still some bad in there. No doubt about it. Still some upside. But like I mentioned before, that does not mean that the center position is not going to go unnoticed in the draft. I don't think that the Raiders end up taking a center in their first two picks, but maybe with one of their two third rounders. Well, maybe it's with their fourth rounder. If you were to ask me right now who are the top five centers in the 2023 NFL draft, these are the names. And you could split hairs between what type of offensive lineman you want. Like to me, Weipler is a better probably center prospect than Avila, though Avila can probably play a little bit more offensive guard than Weipler can. However, these are your top four centers, though, in the draft. Before we continue to rock and roll here with the more rumors around the offensive line, because remember, if you're not winning in the offensive line, if you're not winning in the trenches, nothing else really matters. But a huge shout-out to today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. And if you haven't already gotten started with them, y'all, Seriously, take a second. I want you to be happier and healthier individuals. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted immune system support and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. My grandparents always said that the early bird gets the worm. AG1 inspires and motivates me to get as many worms as possible every single day. AG1 really helps me getting my day started, getting out of bed, especially after some of our crazy shows. It's not easy and I'm a person who likes and needs a routine. AG1 helps me stick to my healthy routine. Wake up early, take my AG1, take Maybe my dog Chuck or Choco Bear for a walk and then hit the gym before work. Cover my nutritional base for the day. Literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like it because it costs them less than $3 a day. That's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality source ingredients. It is a just win baby. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out. Link's going to be in the comments and in the description of today's video. So we talked about the center position. And if you looked at our starting offensive line, you're going to see Natane Moody. Is he? Does that mean locked in, Mitch, starting right guard this upcoming se uh, season? I'm going to say pump the brakes, but I do think that there's a good chance, 50% chance. People are talking, right? So the reason why I'm going to go out and say this is because I was told by a really good source, I'd say two months ago, that the Raiders loved Natane Moody. It was one of the reasons why they signed him midseason last season. And one of the things that they love about him is he's a core guy, but he's also a tough dude, right? 
Really, really tough player. The exact quote that I was told was, he was a mean mother effer. Effer wasn't quite the word that they used, but you guys can paint the picture. So the fact that he has ability to play left guard and right guard, and I know the Raiders like Dylan Parham more at left guard because they want him to be able to block the blind side. When you think about offensive lines, if your quarterback's a righty, you want the left side, the blind side, to be more well protected, right? It's why it's Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, and then so on and so forth. I do think that the Raiders' offensive line deserves a little bit more credit because they played as a top 12 unit last season, which nobody thought that they were going to do. But I would say the biggest eyesore, the biggest turnstile, the, the biggest question mark around the Raiders' offensive line every single year, or I guess game last year, was right guard. And if you were to ask me, is Natane Moody an upgrade over Alex Bars? My, my, my answer is hopefully. <laughs> and I do think that he can really help out more in the run game because that's where he's better. However, you go back, you look at what he did in 2020. Was not great. In 2021, though, and the reason why I'm using 2021 instead of 2022 is because he only played in 28 snaps last season. But in 317 snaps with the Denver Broncos, 59.0 overall grade according to the PFF, a 52.0 pass block grade, and then a 59.3. What I like, though, with him is he is physical. I think that would help out Andre James. And then when you got Jermaine Illuminor next to you, who that man also deserves a lot more credit, it could be interesting. But what's the one thing that the Raiders love? It's that B word. It's versatility. And the fact that he has played left guard, the fact that he's played right guard, that gives him an opportunity to – it doesn't work out for him to be a starter. Or if the Raiders go into the draft, they find somebody who's better than him. Well, now that the, they have extra depth, and last season they lost a lot of offensive linemen, which put other players in difficult situations. And one of the reasons why they weren't crazy about John Simpson was because they felt like he can only play left guard. He wasn't versatile enough to play right guard. So here's my question. Will Natane Moody be the Raiders' starting right guard this upcoming season? Is he going to be starting? Type S for a start. Or if you think he's going to be riding the bench, go type your B for bench. If the season started today, he would start at right guard. I'm saying Chugs and I, live watch party, we're right here. He's your starting right guard next to Jermaine Illuminor in between Andre James. That does not mean, though, that he is going to be the starter week one. And the reason why I say that is because I only gave it to just win babies. There's a coin flip. If the Raiders go out and they add a better offensive guard in this year's draft, you're going to put Moody on the bench, right? Like, you can type your B. I do think that Peter Skaronsky is by far the best offensive guard in this year's class. However, you're going to have to take him, I would imagine, in the top 15, definitely top 20. So if you were to say, all right, Osiris Torrance is available. Cody Mach from North Dakota State's available. To me, there's tier breaks. Skaronsky, clear number one. And then you can make an argument for both Torrance and Mach to me, like where you can split hairs. And then there is another big tier break with Jordan McFadden and then Warren McClendon. So to me, if you want to find your starter, I think you're going to have to potentially take him at 38. If, you, if one of those guys fall, interesting. I just don't think that either of those guys are going to fall all the way down to 70. Now, I got a new graphic for you all. So I actually had somebody hit me up yesterday on Cameo. And I, I, I just want to be more accessible to the nation. Like, if people want to talk to me, if people need something, hey, please don't be shy. You want more news and rumors, you know where to find me, at MitchellRen365 on Twitter and Instagram. To the diehards over on Locals, I see you. I appreciate you. Check out my mock draft I put out there on Monday. And then on Cameo, I've gotten, you know, requests for happy birthdays. And yesterday... Shout out to Steve Sagala, who he uh, he sent me something on Cameo and said, "Hey man, can you can you give me a Raiders? Can you give me a shout out on the show? If you hit me up on Cameo and I don't know, you want me to sing Happy Birthday, you want to chug a beer, you want to do some crazy shit like that, I'm all about it. And I'll give you a shout out here on the Raiders Report. On top of that, I, at the end of the day, I like hanging out with y'all. I like being a part of the nation and." If there's extra ways that I can show you how to do that, I'm all about it. So, Steve, cheers to you, man. Let's go to the next one. Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler. They're safe in 2023, no matter what. I think this one is three just win babies. The more and more people I talk to, the more and more things that I see Mark Davis go out and say, I just think that no matter what, 
they're going to have jobs in 2023. Now, let's say this. Uh, if McDaniels is out there blowing timeouts, which from some of the things that Mark Davis said this week, apparently timeouts are the, his biggest pet peeve, like if he used them too early. So if McDaniels is blowing timeouts, then this might be a different conversation. But Mark Davis said that Ziegler and McDaniels, that's the long-term plan. This isn't a one-year, it's not a two. He said long-term plan. And the Raiders this offseason have shown me that they're willing to build for the future. I would imagine that they're willing to build for the future because they know they have job security. Like, you don't make some of the moves that the Raiders have made unless you know that your job is safe. Like, you're, you're going 12 draft picks deep because you believe that, okay, we're going to have a full year. So Davis believes that this regime is going to get them a Raiders a Super Bowl. When you look at a lot of the contracts that the Raiders did, I've been saying it for a while, it looks like a three-year window. I do think that no matter what, Josh McDaniels is going to be the Raiders head coach. Dave Ziegler is going to be the general manager in 2023. Now, if it's bad after 2024, that's a different conversation. So with that being said, what is your confidence level in McDaniels and Dave Ziegler? I got 1,000 people watching this live right now. If you're not watching it live, friendly reminder, I go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So let me know. Scale it 1 to 10, your confidence in McDaniels and Ziegler. As it stands right now, I am at a four. Multiple ways, right? You know what I'm talking about, babe. But when I think about my confidence level in McDaniels, it's hard to be confident. Now, can I be glass half full? Can I be the dude who, hey, this offseason, I'm going to try to be the positive guy? I like the idea of the Raiders trying to build their defense in the draft. I like the idea of the Raiders trying to shed some of that dead cap hit. Like, to me, they are definitely building this roster much different, which... I always say if you try to do the same thing over and over and over again, that's the definition of insanity. I can sit up here and say that, okay, this plan that they're putting in place, it could work. And if it ends up working, great. But from what I have seen so far, it's really hard to have that confidence in McDaniels, which is why I gave it a four. Also, you know, one of the things that I do think needs to be brought up, and I'm going to give Mark Davis a little bit of credit. You know, he took a lot of blame for things that happened to Derek Carr. Derek Carr talked about it. And then Davis said, you know, the one thing that's been constant over the last 11 years since I've been the owner, it's been me, right? And Mark Davis, since taking over as the full-time owner of the Las Vegas Raiders, 79-115 and 115 record, and they're 0-2 in the playoffs. I think what you're seeing right now is Davis saying, all right, in years past, we have taken the flashy player in the draft, or we have spent a lot of money on big-time players, made the big-time trades, and it hasn't worked out. So if I'm Davis, I'm going, all right, let's try something different. I'm just going to say, screw it. I'm going to put my trust in a regime that has worked before where they put the team over the players and they build through the draft. I think that's what you're seeing Davis do right now. So to me, Mark Davis is going to be patient with McDaniels, and he's going to be patient with, with Ziegler, whether it's good or bad in 2023. I do think it's also one of the biggest reasons why you saw him use the fantastic quote. He thought that their regime was doing the right things. The players weren't executing. So if they feel like that they can build a plan where the players execute, then in theory, you're supposed to have a lot of success. Unfortunately, though, you just got to wait and see. I will admit, though, if the Raiders are still bad after the 2024 season, that's where I think McDaniels and Ziegler end up getting fired. You had 2022, 2023, 2024. If you had three years and you're still bad after three years and your plan does not go the way that it's supposed to, that's where I see them pull the plug in this entire thing. So whether you like to hear that or not, I do think that this is going to be a McDaniels and Dave Ziegler show in 2023 and in 2024. Shrug emoji, anything after that.